Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now, the between the blogger of the Dragons Den and one of the hosts between Terminus on ON TV. Um, we got some very interesting matches here. Um, of course, girls' basketball season kicked off the year. Um, a lot of shock. It was, it was one shocking upset. I, I was, I'm shocked to see about what happened in the regular season. We're also going to preview um, boys' basketball as well. That starts up this week. Um, but let's look at it. the first one here. Is the, you got a lot of girls' basketball um, mentioned here. Um, when you look at what happened on them, um, started up on Monday, of course, um, you got Rochester Adams, who's 2-0 and starting off. Troy's 2-0. and um, You know, but the one upset I was very shocked about what happened was um, Clarkston. Um, what happened over there was um, was one of the most shocking games I've probably seen. I mean, like, what happened. Of course, Clarkston's got a lot of high expectations. They're led by um, Ashley Skaggs, a very good three-point shooter. You got Erica Davenport, who's going to go to Marquette. You got Kayla Lugin back, who's a three-point shooter. Um, you got... Yeah, Kayla Lugin back is a good player, but um, when you look at what happened when they played Waterford Mott on Friday night over there at Clarkson, that was kind of a shock. Um, when you look at that game, they were up 22-18. Mott was up 22-18 at halftime, and then um, and then Clarkson got it up to 24, led 24-23 until Waterford Mott went on an 11-0 run, and that event 13-0 run eventually event put the game out of reach to beat Clarkson. The score of that game was mind-boggling. 56 to 41. My God. It 56 41. It's shocking to see what happened to, to Clarkston. You know what I mean? But I know Skaggs and Davenport both had 34 of the 41 points. You know, that ain't going to cut it. Clarkston needs a third score when you look at that game. You know, but when you look at it from Waterford Mott's perspective, um, you got to give credit to Michelle Scar for what um, she did against. Um, you know, they lost a lot of talent last year, Waterford Mott. Um, they lose Lauren Hung. Of course, um, she was a very good player. You lose a couple other tra- who transferred out of the district. Um, but to do this to a team like Clarkston, who just went in there and just completely just decimated. They just decimated Clarkston. And that was one of the most biggest shocking games I've ever seen this season was when you go in there and you, when you go in there and you basically say, "Well, you go in there and just basically into Clarkston and just beat Clarkston," it is rare that somebody would go into Clarkston and beat the Wolves like that. You know, I mean, and you look at that game. I mean, it's also shocking also to see that Clarkston. Um, you know, I'm not sure how they do in the red. I mean, like if they're playing like that right now, they got a game tomorrow against Davidson. I like them against Davidson. I mean, the schedule still got to play Dakota. I mean, that's not gonna be an easy game for Clarkson. I mean, you know. And then you look at um, and then you look at another team, right now zero two reeling, Oxford, the Wildcats. This is a team I think right now looks bad. I mean, you know, this they rely a lot on Jessica Murphy. You know, she's a very good player. She's legit going to Wayne State, but. There's gonna be games where you cannot rely on Jessica Murphy to um to win your game. And it's a problem for Steve Everett. Now I understand you're playing two very good teams in Adams and Lakeland. Lakeland, of course, Oxford led that game. They were up by eight in the um, end of the first at halftime. To see only to see Lakeland go on a um 13-0 run, which that really derailed Oxford. Of course, once that once that happened, all hell's out. All hell's loose for Oxford, you know, because I was surprising to see that Oxford would dominate that game for a half, and then all of a sudden they lose it and they lose that game. That was shocking to see. And now Oxford right now sits. It was a 17 run run, and it's shocking to see Oxford sitting on two. Now looking at the rest of the schedule, they still got to play Westland John Glenn. That's a win. And they got to play Stony Creek. That's a, that's a tricky game right there, I think, for Oxford. And then you're in a league. You're favored in the league. But I'm not sure if you're going to be favored, you know what I mean, when you look at it. When you look at it. Because I think everybody in the league is very much balanced in the white. Because you got you got 
you got themselves. You got Orion, who's going to be very good. Bloompy Hill is very good. You got Troy, he's very good. They proved to be a very good team. West Bloomfield, you know, they're going to be, they'll be something. You know what I mean? I mean, like, the talent, the cupboard's not bare. I mean, they got a very good point guard, you know, replacing Deja Dinkins. And, um, I mean, and also you got um, Avondale, of course. They got, they're going to, their strength a lot, their strength is going to be in the interior. Avondale now sits at 1-1 one one after getting, at 1-2, and two, sorry, after they lost to Celine the other night. You know, that's something that's bothering. You know, when you look at Avondale, they're sitting at 1-2 and two right now, but, um, but um, when you look, and of course, I look at a game that really much mind-boggled me was was Bloomfield Hill 73, Ferndale University 6. 6. Are you kidding me? What is Jeff Rubin doing over there? Running out the score against Ferndale University. My God. My God. I mean... You got a very good team. I know you got some very good players. You got Amanda Sape. You got at the center. You got um, you got jump. You got Sherry Jackson, of course, a good small forward. You got Amanda Moss. You know, they had balanced scoring. They play Alan Park Cabrini on Wednesday night. Cabrini just lost to Gross Eel, fifty-one forty-two. I mean, I don't think they match up well with Moonbeam Hills. I mean. I look at Bloomby Hills as non-conference. Their schedule is re- pretty much soft until they reach North Farmington, and that's a, and that's in January. They got to play North Farmington, and that's not going to be an easy game, you know. And they still got to play South, and also got to play Southfield Lathrop. Southfield Lathrop's a team I thought was very impressive yesterday, on Saturday when they knocked off Detroit Cast Tech. You know, Michelle Marshall Jackson, Michelle Jackson Marshall, very good coach, one of the best coaches in the state. She won a state championship. And to see what happened over there, um, to see, I think Deja Church led led him in scoring. She did, um, but I think she's going to be the X factor. I'm not so on Antoinette Miller. I'm really not. But you got the Bellows inside. You got Ty and Paige. I mean, those two girls. They're the Twin Towers. They're for real. They're legit. Harrison, of course, this was a team I thought Harrison losing. A tough one. They beat Lavoni Stevenson earlier in the week, which is a good win for them without Kyler Rowland, their best player, one of their best players. And then to lose a tough one to um, Ann Arbor Huron, who's a very, very good team. And um, you got to give Tim Micklash, their coach, a lot of credit <coughs> for what they've done. Harrison's a very good team. And they lose, they lost by five to a very good, legit team. You know, I expect Harrison to be a very good force to be reckoned with. Stony Creek's also one and all. Um, whoop Troy Athens sixty eight twenty. Troy Athens sitting zero and two. They lost to Sterling Heights Stevenson, and then um, they got whooped by Stony Creek. Um, to me, it's a shock and see. Royal Oak, of course, losing to um, North Farmington thirty four thirty two early in the week. Um, that kind of bothered me a little bit, but they bounced back to knock off Royal Oak Shrine. Um, Royal Oak's a very unique team here. I mean, Brian Spada does a very good job of his defense. I mean, but still, Royal Oak, you know, they should not have lost that game to Wall Lake Northern. Wall Lake Northern's not a very good team. They let a freshman go in. They let a freshman go off. You can't do that. Not in this league. You know, not in this league, especially when she did in the third quarter. You cannot do that. And, you know, of course, I mentioned Clarkson losing. Um, Troy's two and zero. Of course, um, they had some two nice wins. Adams two and zero. They had some very impressive wins. Um, Rochester hasn't played a game yet. They start tonight against Adams. That's a loss. I mean, when you look at it here, um, you know, when I look at other games around the other teams, Hazel Park looked. They got, I know they got a new system they're trying to build. I know a former Novi coach is over there, but you're playing Novi. That's out ma- you got outmatched over there by Novi. It's not that's rough to do when you look at what the what they're trying to do over there at um at Novi. Um I mean like Hazel Park's trying to establish a tradition of winning. It's it's tough over there to establish a tradition of winning over Hazel Park because, you know, you got the talent to do it, you know, but still it's a tough situation, you know, when you look at Hazel Park. Um of course, I know the relationship between Jessica Haggerty and Bill Kelp. You know what I mean? It's a good relationship. Very much is. I mean, like, um, but it's turning around a program like Hazel Park is going to be much tougher 
than what people think over there. And, you know, it's been proven over there. You know, it's tough. You know, when you look at gold teams, it's very difficult to turn them around. You know what I mean? I mean, one of the things I've been more curious to see about is how, see how Troy basically looks into, I mean, basically how Troy Athens, you know, it's tough for them to rebuild. You know what I mean? I think Hazel Park's a more tougher chore to rebuild than a lot of these other teams around this area, around the area. And it's tough. You know, it's not easy building a program at a consistent power because it's the basis. You know, you got to have the middle school program's got to be strong, I think, that's got to build, got to be the feeder to build that program in there. You know, you look at a lot of other teams around the area, you know what I mean? You got Lake Orion that has three middle schools that feed their program. You got, you got, um, Oxford, they got, you got a program that, a middle school program that feeds their program. I mean, they all, I mean, you got, um, you also got like Farmington, of course, a lot of people feed around their program, you know, I mean, this is the key is you got to have the middle school program, I think, to feed the program. And I think right now the problem, Hazel Park is, um, is having that issue right now is, is their middle school program trying to feed, I mean, is their middle school program feeding off the program? And that's what's going to, that's what's happening right now. That's what's happening right now. And it's a tough process. I think it's a tough challenge for Jessica Haggerty and her staff over at Hazel Park to build that program. Another team I've been shocked and surprised to see about is Birmingham Seahome. They got absolutely whooped by Troy Thursday, on, on Thursday night. I mean, Mackenzie Harbot did not play in that game. You know, I took a very interesting quote from um, I took an interesting quote from from the um from that game and um. It was from um, Seahome's coach, January Hitleski. She said, quote, you know, she said, quote, you know, um, she said, quote, you know, we're going to have to work on fundamentals like spacing, tightening up the defense, and boxing out. Our team has a high basketball IQ. We'll keep working on it, and we'll be fine. They didn't have Mackenzie Harbaugh in that game. I don't know where she played. I don't know. I didn't think she played in that game. But if Harbot played in that game against Troy, the score would have been a lot more, a lot closer than it was. And to see what happened, and it's basically what you're looking at here is Seahome gets in. If if Harbot misses some time, they're in trouble. I mean, when you look at Seahome, I mean, this is a team. I think that um they're one of the favorites in the blue. But you know, with Seahome, they really need Mackenzie Harbot back. And they need her back bad. They got a, They still got a tough schedule to play. They got to play Adams, Stony Creek, and Orion during the year. And that's not counting your league schedule. We got to play Royal Oak, Oak Park. You know, those two teams are going to be tough. I mean, a team that I can't understand is Farmington. How in the blue world did Farmington end up losing by 18 points to St. Catherine of Siena Academy? I remember a couple of years ago, I was like Oregon when they lost to Lansing Home School a couple of years ago. But to lose to St. Catherine Siena Academy at Wixom, that's rough. You know, I know they got a new coach over there, and, you know, Dave Brome's not at Milford anymore. I mean, Farmington, speaking of Dave Brome, those two teams play each other. They play each other tomorrow. That ought to be very interesting. I mean, Milford just knocked off Holly. Holly's one of the top teams in the Metro. And... I don't know what to say about that. Groves right now, I, Groves is one and one. They lost the rope here. Um, they got a good player, Michelle Meredith, who um, who went nuts against um, Detroit University, Detroit University, Detroit. I mean, like University Prep. University Prep's awful. I mean, Groves won that game because of looking at that game. Um, it's just you had two bad teams going at. It. Groves is going to struggle, I think, this year when you look at it. Now, the blue may be more balanced, but Seahome's clearly the team to beat there in that division. It is what it is. I mean, when you look at other teams around the area, of course, um, of course, I haven't seen heard much from Oak Park. You know, I don't think they played a game yet. Or maybe they did. Wait, yeah, they did. They have. I haven't found out anything how they did um, from that game, but I'll find out. But um, but I'm curious to see how some of these teams, and I forgot to mention Lake Orion. Of course, the Dragons, 
They won 45-34 with Brandon on them Friday night. You know, they I thought they looked good at spurts. They just they didn't look good. I'm gonna be honest with you, they did not look good. I'll take that back. They didn't look good. But they still found a way to get the win. You know? I thought when you look at that team, you know what I mean? This dragon team, you know, they did snap a losing streak. So, I mean, you just gotta give them props there, but but um they look all right, you know what I mean? But um but they play Linden tomorrow night, very good team that they got there, and they got Taylor Smith is very good. Um, she's put up, she's put up 23 points against them. She put 23 against Brighton. Of course, Brighton's a very good team. They got a six foot three center and Chelsea Crocker, um, who came over from Grand Ledge, and they got another one. I mean, they got they're a big team. They're big athletic. It'd be an interesting match tomorrow between Lake Orion and um, Linden. I think it's gonna be an interesting matchup. A lot of people said Linden was gonna be ranked seventh in the Metro. I don't buy that at all. You know, Brandon was a good team. They're a legit team. They have a tough one tomorrow. I mean, they got. A, I think they play Adams. That's not good. You know, a correction. Brandon plays Abbott tomorrow. You know what I mean? In that game, that could be an interesting game. You know what I mean? Especially with them. <laughs> but I don't know if if Brandon has the size to compete with them with Avondale because Avondale's got the two twin towers inside. Um, they got Alyssa Smith, who's a big, big six, six three center. Good player. I mean, curious to see what she does. They got they got the important twins. They got the twins up there, the guards. I mean, we'll see what happens over there. Um, but oh, my overall take on the overall take was been um, a lot of like I'm still shocked over what happened to Clarkson against Waterford Mott. Um, I'm still shocked about what happened against um for um. I mean, like you know, I'm still I mean, like I'm very surprised. You know what I mean? But there's going to be a lot of good games tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of good games tomorrow. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, the league, it's the first game of the year. For some, they're playing their second. Some playing their third games. You know what I mean? I know Adams is playing their third game of the year tonight. I know Rochester's got that holiday tournament. West Bloomby and Oxford are there, too. You know, so that'll be interesting to look at. But we'll preview that in about two weeks or so. Of course, that Rochester Holiday Classic Tournament at Rochester Falcon Invite. Very interesting games over there for girls basketball when you look at it. Um, recapping it, I think that um, recapping it, I think the white's much tougher than people think. Um, the red, of course, um, still shocked over Clarkston, you know, but but um, if the key there, I think right now you're starting to look at the who I think could, um, I think Adams is going to be third. I think Lathrop second. I think Harrison's the top team right now. I think Clarkson's the fourth best team in that league. And I forgot to mention North Farmington. Of course, they lost Megan Carter. You know, so she's out for two weeks. When I look at North Farmington, of course, I was shocked to see that they lost um, to Wild Lake Northern. Um, I know Megan Carter's out, and it hurts that Megan Carter's out. But it is what it is. You know, I mean, they got to deal with toughness. They got to tough it up. I think North Farmington's going to be fine. And I think it's going to, I think this Carter injury is going to help them in the long run. And West Bloom, I forgot to mention them, um, lost 50-25 to Clarkston. Um, very young team. They still got Rachel Harners, Taylor Pierce, and um, they got a good point guard also. Um, but then they beat Wall Lake Central. Wall Lake Central's terrible. They lost, They won that 14 over them. It is what it is. You know what I mean? West Bloom is now 1-1 of the year. You know, that's a good win for Zach Hilbers and his crew. You know, but um, that's my take on the, um, it's my take right now on the, um, league right now for girls basketball all right and then when we um when we come back here to oa now we're going to talk about the um boys basketball previews here coming up here on oaa now we want a habitat home i love working on my habitat home Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a Habitat homeowner. Being a Habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for Habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org.
Welcome back to the Only Now, Sam and Tamina Blogger of the Dragon's Den and one of the hosts of Between Terminus on O1 TV. Got boys basketball starting up this week. A lot of interesting games um, on the slate. Got Clarkson, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Lake Orion, Oxford. Um, not to mention a couple of them, you know what I mean? When you look at when you look at the league coming up, um, this league's very unique. Um I mean, like a lot of there's like a lot of hype surrounding some of these teams. Of course, North Farmington, I feel like right now is the best team in Oakland County. But you can't count out Clarkston, you can't count out Oak Park, you can't count out um Troy Athens. You know what I mean? Or Troy, or even Orion for that matter, but uh, or Adams for that matter, because like in Oxford, you know, I mean, there's a lot of good teams, a lot of parity in the OA um in the OA this year. Um, but right now, I think right now the best team in the um. In the OA right now is North Farmington, especially who they got back. You got Jerome Rogers who's back. You got um North Farmington's very very legit team. Um, when you look at the year that they have, um, you know when you look at farm when you look at um when you look at um, no doubt when I look at the year that North Farmington's got, um, they should be an interesting team to look at. There's no doubt. I think the Raiders are gonna be are gonna be there in the very end. I think Todd Negotian's gonna be. That type of team, I think, is going to be focused and determined on making how um nor how um how um I just don't like their jerseys. I think that um I think the top and then the number the number on top with the um with the name down that's terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible because I don't understand that their jersey combination. They got the talented team. The question is going to be is who's going to be their five. And who's going to be there? Um, and of course, you know, I think that's going to be a lot of teams' questions. You know, a team that I think is going to have that same question, of course, is at Oxford. When you look at Coach Stephon Henning and his um Falcons, when you look at when you look at Oxford, and his Wildcats, excuse me, Stephon Henning, of course, former player at Rochester, and also played college ball at Rochester College. But when you look at Oxford, you got Mason Virus, who's a shooting guard, very good guard. You got him. Um, Delvin Alexander, who's going to play the four. You got Connor Alzman, the three point shooter. I mean, like, I was talking to Anthony Termina about this last night, and we look, we both talked about how Ox, we compare Oxford to UMKC, the University of Missouri, Kansas City Kangaroos. They're, they've been known to have very good shooters, very good, um, you know, they like to balance the floor out. I mean, like, that's the team that they remind me of, is, is UMKC. Um, when you look at that game, um, when you look at what Oxford's going to have, they got some depth. Um, they're a good team this year. They're going to be a very good team this year. I expect them to contend in the blue this year, even though the favorite in that division is West Bloomfield. For um, Jeremy Dana, who's got probably who's got Trishan Jackson and Michael King on that team, and and also Zach Howard. Um, those three guys are going to be difference makers, I think, for the Lakers this year. You know, the key is. The key is, can Dana get that talent to work right, work with each other, work with chemistry wise? You know, they just went through a turbulent off season. You know, where they thought they were going to get those two Nigerian transfers from from U- University of Detroit Jesuit. However, those two guys, it ended up being an ugly, ugly, ugly controversial thing. You know, involving them and West Bloomfield had, and West Bloomfield really had them. Um, they had nowhere. I mean, like West Bloomfield really was in the middle of it. They didn't deserve being in the middle of it. And those players didn't deserve being in the middle of it. But, you know, everything's now settled now. And, um, you know, it's an unfortunate situation for um, Billy Thomas Sr. and his um, family that um, that those two Nigerians are not at West Bloomfield. They're still at UD, D- Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit. That's bad news for teams like Southfield and Farmington who's got to deal with them in that district. That's bad. And you still got Detroit Renaissance in there. I mean, when you look at that side of the that district, that's gonna be very tough. But um, you know, I still think the toughest regional is gonna be over there too. But um, but when you look at that match, when you look at when you look at um West Bloomfield, I think the Lakers are gonna be a very very interesting team to watch. They're clearly one of the favorites. Um, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when you look at the Lakers, um, they they're very very talented. Um, I expect them to do well this year. I expect Stony Creek also to be a um, hard-working team this year for Coach Steve Norgro. Of course, you got two very good players in Scott Reeder, and um, i got to figure out the other one is. It's not, it's not in my head right now. But, um, 
is what it is. But um, but um, they're gonna be good. I think Stony Creek's gonna be a good team to watch. Their defense is hard. They work hard. They're a good team. They're talented enough. I think they'll compete. You know what I mean? And then of course, you know, I'm gonna look at a team, another team, Oak Park. Of course, they got on the transfer boat again. They just got Rodney Scales back from um from Wisconsin. Now he's back in the fold and. Oak Park's probably got one of the most deadliest um, power four, forward center combos, I think, in the state. You got Scales back, you got Fuller back, you got that River Rouge transfer guy. I'm um, going to probably back those two guys up. Oak Park's got a serious, Oak Park could be a serious contender. They could be. You know, could you just imagine a regional fine, a regional semifinal where you have um, Oak Park against them? Um, like with Oak Park against um, North Farmington? Good God. That'll be something, you know what I mean. That would be something. And um, you know, when you look at, and then of course when you look at another team, I'm curious to see is Rochester Adams. Of course, you got Necker, you got Spencer Littleson. I mean, John Hall's gonna be good. I mean, he's still gonna be good. It's just, you know, when you lose a guy like a Kem J Williams, who actually was like one of the heart and souls of the team, you know. But it was, I think it was kind of a good thing that um John Hall actually um. Let Littleson, let Necker, you know what I mean, do their thing. And, like, um, you know, they're going to be asked to do more, though, for Adams. You know what I mean? They're going to be asked to do more for him this year when you look at the situation that they're in. Um, Adams is going to be a very interesting team to look at. You know, a team that I look at, of course, is Troy Athens. The Red Ox, I mean, like, my God. I thought last year, you know, a lot of people hyped up Troy Athens to be very, very good. Um, their experience, yes. I mean, they got some talented players. But, um, you know, they're going to be relying a lot on Corbin Village and John Van Hoff. Um, but um, when you look at Adams, when you look at um, when you look at Troy Athens, I'm not so on Tim Chicoy at all as a player. You know, he's he's got a good work ethic. He's got a good, um, good motor, um, good player. But um, I'm just not sold, you know what I mean, that – he 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 could be a good floor general. He's a small forward by trade, you know. Then you look at um players like Devin Mills who's gonna be right there as well. I mean like, but um still, you know, when I look at Troy Athens, do I think they're better than Oak Park? No, I don't think though. But <clears throat> you know, when you look at the schedule that they gotta play, um, Oak Park's gotta play. You know, Troy Adams still has to play Oak Park twice. They got to play Lake Orion twice. They got to play. They got to play. Um, of course, Pontiac. They got to play Rochester twice, and they got to play Troy twice. I mean, that's not going to be easy games, especially when you have to play Oak Park twice, Troy twice, and Lake Orion twice. That's not going to be an easy thing at all. You know, when you look at Troy, when you look at Troy Adams, at the other end to Long Lake Road, Troy's going to be all right. They're scrappy. They're a scrappy bunch. Gary Frog loves scrappy bunch teams. And this in this group totally defines the word scrappy. And Troy Athens is going to be a very unique team to watch heading into the year. The Red Hawks are going to be a team I think is going to be very unique, very talented. You know what I mean? But um, but question is going to be is, you know, a lot of people are going to say, can Troy Athens, can Troy beat their are tribal Troy Athens twice? I think it can split with them. You know what I mean? I think the game at Troy is going to be tough for Troy Athens, but Troy is going to be a good team to watch this year up there. You know, they're going to be an interesting team. Southfield's got a lot of talent as well. You know what I mean? They, they're they known for their speed. they got a very good player. Um, Southfield's a team I think that's got to be well-noticed, well, um, well-thought. I think they're going to be a good team to watch heading into the year. Also, um, when you look at it, Berkeley, I think they got one of the tough schedules early in the year. I think Berkeley's going to be a team I think to watch for heading into the um, campaign. Um, they got a tough schedule. I mean, they're one. Of the, I think them and Farmington. I think they're going to be one of the teams. I think they're going to compete heading into the year. Um, another team to look for is um, another team to look for is Groves. Of course, Groves is in the blue. Um, new coach over there. Um, but they got some questions over there. Um, can I mean they got some depths, you know what I mean? But um, they got some depth concerns. But also you got to look at Groves. I mean, like this is a unique team to watch heading into the year. Um, we'll see what happens in that stretch right there. Um, <laughs> other teams around the league, of course, Seaholm. They replaced the new coach in Jose Andreas. Um, 
their system takes over over there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Maples do this year. Of course, um, they don't have a lot of talent there, but I thought their JV was okay, it's solid. But um, we'll see what happens over there. Rochester's going to struggle badly. You know, a lot of people, I still think John Pleasant's getting um, getting paid for what happened two years ago when um, James Young went over there from Troy and forced Troy to go to the um, – Stay forced Troy to stay in the red, and I think I think he's st- I think it's still being paid for the punishment there. Pontiac, of course, Ben Kelso over there, bringing his new program over there. It's going to be very interesting what they do over there, at Pontiac. Um, you know, what the situation's going on over there. Um, and then you look at Abendale. I think Abendale's going to be a sar- it's going to be a sleeper. Abendale's a sleeper. You know, you got one of the best coaches in the game, Tim Morton's there. You got, I think Steve Lee Law, I think is the best JV coach, one of the best JV coaches there also. And I think Avondale is going to be a team to watch this year over there. And <clears throat> also got Steve Deutsch, that program's stable over there. I think Avondale's going to do some wonders this year in the blue. Um, they got the talent, they got the size, um, they got the quickness to do some damage this year over there in Yellow Jacket country. And then, of course, um, other teams to mention, of course, mentioned, um, got – Got Clarkson. They're the next team here to be mentioned here. Got um, Dan Fife's got a very interesting team. They got um, Foster Lawyer, who's there. You got um, Coach Ewins, of course, the tight end on the um, football team over there, Clarkson, um, who plays. You got Nick Myers, who's a very good player. Um, you know, the key is um, the key, I think, for Clarkson is going to be their schedule is brutal. They got to play Macomb, Dakota. They got to play Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. And they got to play. Um, you know, their non-conference is tough. And then, you get, and then when you get in the league play, they've got to play North Farrington twice, Adams twice. Um, it's not going to be an easy schedule for Clarkson. They've still got to play Oak Park as well. I mean, that's not going to be an easy game for for the for, um, easy schedule, I think, for Clarkson heading into the year <clears throat> in that one. Um, and then, of course, you got um, Bloopia Hills, a big team. Very, I mean, like, they went to state finals last year, um, you know, um, for coach um, Dwayne Graves. Um, they're going to be an interesting team to watch. Um when you look at them, I mean, they got some shooters still. They still got some shooters. Um, they're gonna be all right to look at. They'll be all right this year. And then you got um, you got Harrison, of course, relying on John Rexloff. Of course, um, for those who don't know, John Rexloff, of course, is the um, son of a meteorologist who works at WXYZ Channel Seven, Dave Rexloff. Of course, um, a lot of people. I remember when they played Lake Orion. Um, they got a lot of them a little bit on Dave Rexroth. Of course, um, it's unfortunate situation what happened to Dave this year. I mean, when he lost his eye, but it is what it is. It's unfortunate. But, um, but you know, I think, you know, I mean, like, it's unfortunate, but um, he's got a very good player in John Rexroth who's going to be very, very solid this year when you look at that one. Of course, you got um, Farmington, of course. I'm curious to see what they have this year. Um, there was a lot of questions that lingered over there. Um, there's, there's some questions when you look at it there, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens over there when, um, with North Farm, with them Farmington, of course, um, they're one of the favorites in the gold, you know, but we'll see what happens. Ferndale, same thing. Um, I expect Ferndale to be more competitive, more balanced. Um, when you look at it, um, I think it's going to be a very unique situation over there at Ferndale when you look at it. And then of course, Hazel Park, they're going to be all right. They'll be, they'll be down. I mean, like, um. They had some some sparks last year, some talent, but you know when you look at them, I think they'll be all right heading into the year, heading into the campaign. Um, when you look at it, I think they'll be fine. And then um, the last team here to match where we're going to break is Lake Orion. Um, the Dragons, they got some talent. You know what I mean? I'm the, I think they're the sleeper in this team, in this debate, in the white. I think they are um, because you got there's not a lot of players in, to get noticed to get noticed. Um, this team, you know, they lost a lot of talent from a year ago, but when you look at the Dragons, I mean, like, this is a team I think that could do some wonders, could do some damage um, heading into the year. Of course, um, they'll, I think Lake Orion's going to surprise some people. They will. You can take a look also on my um, top ten on the Dragons Den blog. I'm at Dragons at Saginaw Bay at blogspot.com. You can take a look at it and see how um, how um, my top ten, I think, will be surprising for basketball coming up heading into the year all right now all right everybody when we come back we're going to reveal my um my projections for the um for girl for boys basketball heading into the year 
here on OAA Now. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to Owen Now. Sam Tamina Blogger of the Dragon's Den and one of the hosts between Terminus on Owen TV. Of course, some if you if you go on my website here at Saginaw Bay at blogspot.com, you can take a look at my top ten um top ten basketball thoughts heading into the year. It go from boys and girls also. Um my um of course my um if you want to know my top ten, um, you know, very interesting. I think um, you know, they're my thoughts. I think personally what's gonna happen um heading into the year. Um, but I'm also a lot of effort expectation to optimism heading into the um campaign now um we're going to go to the um my divisional projections my divisional previews of course um the oa gold very unique division there's it's of course the divisions this year like i said it's very similar to the girls it's a four division out of six um you know in this division you got um in this one you got farmington you got ferndale you got hazel park you got um in there you got um Goodness gracious, I mean, my brain has just, like, been fried and all that. But, well, we, let's go from red to gold, you know what I mean? And we'll go from there. I mean, like, um, first, then, um, we'll go from the red, of course. The red, you got North Farmington, Clarkston, Southfield, Southfield, Lathrop, um, Lumpia Hills, Adams in there. Um, when you look at, um, when you look at this division, I think it's a very unique division. When you look at it, from a perspective like that, a lot of people are going to say North Farmington's favored in there, but you got Clarkson who's going to be also good, and then you got um, and then also you got um, you got um Bloomfield Hills. I think's the dark horse in there. You got um Adams. I also think's going to be another dark horse, and then you got Safia Safia Lathrop. I think those those teams are going to. It'll be very interesting to see that division. Um, when you look at those teams in there, um. I'm going to say right now my fer favorite early on is North Farmington. When you look at the Raiders, North Farmington's a very unique team. They got, a, of course, you got Jacob Choper back, and also you got um, you got um, Jerron Rogers also. I think that North Farmington, they're ranked in the state starting into the year. Um, I know, I mean, like, um, but I'm curious to see how North Farmington does, especially because they got a good team. They got a deep bench. Um you know, but um, I think they're my favorite right now in the red right now. And my second best team would be Clarkston because when you look at the Wolves, I mean, like, we don't know how good Foster Loyner is going to be. Um, I've heard a lot of hype surrounding this kid. He's going to be a very, very good player. Of course, Loyner, of course, remember the former Detroit Piston coach, John Loyner. It's his son who plays on that team. And you got Coach Truins there. You got Merrick Canada. Um, and, of course, it's not counting them. Drew Myers at all, um, what he brings to the um, – Andrew Myers, what he brings to the party. Um, I think when you look at the league, um, you know, in that one, and, of course, the third-best team I think right now would be Adams. I think Adams is a very unique team because you got um, Necker back. You got um, you got um, Spencer Littleson who's back. The question there is I think Adams right now is a slim better right now than Bloomfield Hills. But Bloomfield Hills is still going to be a good team. You know, Dwayne Gray has got a very good team back. Um, this was a team, remember, that has a lot of experience and went to state on finals last year. Um, so they should have some experience back. Um, I expect the admin, I expect a lot of them. Um, I expect a lot of them. Um, it'll be an interesting division. Of course, you got Southfield in there, and also you got Southfield Lathrop. I think Southfield's a better team this year than Southfield Lathrop. Um, heading into the year, my early, um, heading in. Heading into the year, of course, my um, early projections, of course, um, my early projections, of course, from the red, I got um, North, I got North Farmington at one, Clarkson at two, um, Adams, uh, sorry, yep, Adams three, Bloomfield Hills four, Southfield five, Lathrop six. 
that is my projections in the um in the um red division heading into the um campaign um you know so it'll be very unique there of course um in the um gold and the um white division of course very unique division there you got i think you got at least a couple good teams in there that i think could win this division um got a couple good teams in it i think it can win this division um I still think the league is as balanced as, as balanced as people think. I think from from two to um, from two to um, from two to about six. Um, when you look at this league, um, you know, I I mean, like I still think that um, Oak Park is the class of this division. Um, when you look at the Knights, of course, um, the Knights are a very unique. Of course, they got the three headed monster for Brian Tipton. Um, they got an interesting team. Very unique team. Um, when you look at Oak Park, um, the, I mean, like, they got also got the transfers coming in from River Rouge also and other places. I mean, like, Oak Park's going to be fine heading into the um, campaign. Um, I expect Oak Park to do very, very well and maybe even run away with this division. The next best team a lot of people are going to be shocked about here. I mean, like, um, I still think, you know what I mean, <laughs> I just have not been sold on Athens the last few years. You know, even with how good they are, I still think Orion's number two. I think Lake Orion's number two in this one. Despite the fact they're very young, despite the fact that they're um, inexperienced, they got enough talent, you know what I mean? And, and it's a big school, too. Lake Orion's a really big school. They got enough talent to put together a very good team, very good product. Their schedule's absolutely brutal to start the year. They, I mean, it would not surprise me this team starts off 0-8 to start the year, but then the schedule, I don't get them much better for the schedule, I think. Heading into the year, um, Troy Athens ranked number three. I got them third. I mean, like they got some experience. They got Village back. They got um, they got um, Van Hop back. But they got some questions there on that team. I just think that um, I'm not sold on Tim Shakoy as their guard. I'm not sold on the other pieces over there at Troy Athens. I'm just not sold on them as well as people like Scott Bernstein sold on them this year. Um, Troy, I got them four. Very scrappy team. Very good team. I expect to do some damage this year. Pontiac, number five. I got them, of course. Um, they're led, by, of course, by Ben Kelso, who's one of the um, top premier coaches in the league. Um, when you look at when you look at um, Pontiac, when you look at Pontiac, this is a very young team, very, very inexperienced team, though. I think that um, when you look at um, when you look at um, Pontiac, of course, you're replacing the legend in Robert Rogers. Let's not forget, yeah, Robert Rogers is one of the best coaches in the league. Um, and then to see um to see him leave, it's very it's a it's a it's unfortunate to see what happened over there. You know what I mean? But um it is what it is. But um and um they'll move on from it, I think they will. And um and um I think that um when you look at when you look at it here, I think that um it'll be alright heading into the year. Um and then um of course um La my last place team here is Rochester. Um, when you look at when you look at it here, I think that um, Rochester is they're going to be interesting to watch heading into the year. Um, I mean, like um, when you look at, I mean, like they're gonna, they're still feeling the side effects of the um, of what happened last year. Um, but still, I think when you look at heading into the year, um, when you look at it heading into the year. Um, there is no doubt that I think that um that um when you look at it, I think it's possible to see that um when you lose a lot of talent, um when you lose a lot of talent, um, there's no doubt that um it is what it is. But um but Rochester's gonna struggle this year. I think that um I think that um I think when you head into the year, I think that um I, I expect Rochester to struggle this year and um Excuse my writing here. I'm just writing down my projections here. Um, don't worry about it, fans. Um, anyway, but back to the um, back to the um, other um projections here. Um, you know, I think Rochester's are gonna struggle this year heading into the year. Next, we're gonna mention the blue. Um, my top team there in that league's West Bloomfield. Of course, the Lakers, very good team there. Um, of course, Trish and Jackson, Michael King. Of course, Avondale, Oxford's number two on my list here. I think Oxford's gonna be a very good team this year. I mean, I got a shocker at three. I got Avondale there. Um. Avondale, very unique team. Um, when you look at it, I think they're going to be a good team to watch heading into the year. Um, four, I got Stony Creek, the Cougars, very good team there. Oh, no, four, I got Groves there. Sorry, it's a 
Groves will be all right this year. Got a new coach over there. I just think that heading into the year, um, they could be a very interesting team to watch. And um, my um, number five and my um, number five team, Stony Creek, the Cougars, very unique, very interesting, um, very interesting situation over there. Um, when you look at it, um, with Stony Creek, and um, you know, and then my last place team there, I got a C home, of course, the um, Maple's very unique team. Um, when you look at it, um, they'll be all right heading into the year, um, no doubt heading into the campaign. Of course, the last division's the gold. You know, I am. Um, I was kind of conflicted between um, Farmington and um, conflicted between Farmington and Berkeley to start the year, but um, in the end, I ended up going with um, I ended up going with um, Farmington. Of course, very very reluctantly to go with with Farmington. I just think when you look at when you look at um, Farmington, um, they're an interesting team. I mean, like, they got a new coach. In, well, no, the um, same coach is back there, but he actually left for a time. Then he came back. And then so it will be very interesting to look at that situation there. Um, of course, um, my second-ranked team's Ferndale. I think the Eagles are going to be better than people think. Um, and there, my third-ranked team, I got Berkeley. Of course, they got a very tough non-league schedule to start the year. Um when you look at it from that perspective, um, I mean, like, um, Harrison's my fourth ranked team, I think, because he got Rex Roth there. Um, I still think when you look at it heading into the year, um, I still look at when you look at it heading into the year, um, it's going to be very interesting to look at heading into the campaign. I think that um, a lot of these, um, it's going to be very interesting over there. I mean, and then, um, you got my fifth ranked team is Royal Oak, the Ravens, very interesting team there. And then um to look at, I mean, they got a good team there. And Hazel Park, of course, I think is gonna be the last place team in the um, white and the gold heading into this year. So Okay, now we're gonna mention, of course, my um before we conclude the show tonight, where is um my top Dragons Den top ten for the um for the boys basketball season. Of course, um there's a lot of a te- lot of deserving teams that I thought um deserved to be on this list. You know, but um, all of a sudden, but um, you know, but it is what it is, and um, and it is what it is. But um, you know, my um top ten I'm gonna start off is um, is at number ten. I'm gonna it's a it's the first ever time I'm gonna have a tie at the number ten spot. You know, it's between Avondale and Troy. Both the Yellow Jackets and the Colts I think are gonna have a very very good campaign this year. Um, when you look at Avondale and Troy, but I mean, Troy's very scrappy. Gonna be very talented. I think Avondale, same thing. I think I expect Avondale to be a very, very good team this year. Also, number nine, I got the Southfield Blue Jays. Of course, the Blue Jays, very, very good this year. Very fast. They're speedy. I think they're gonna be a good team heading into the year. Number eight, I got Orion. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if Orion starts 0 and 8, but I think it would not surprise me if Orion ends up becoming one of the top teams in the OAA because of the um the chemistry they got. They got some good chemistry up there on that team. Seven is Oxford, of course, the Wildcats, very good team. They got some depth questions. It's going to be an issue there um, when you look at it. Number six is Troy Athens, the Red Hawks, of course, very experienced team back. Loaded team, of course, um, when you look at the um, Red Hawks. Number five, I got is Bloomfield Hills, the Blackhawks, very interesting team to look at heading into the year. Of course, they're not going to be the same team, that same team, of course, that went to the state finals last year um, heading into that campaign. Number four is Rochester Adams, the Highlanders, of course. They lost to Kem J. Williams. They're still going to be good enough, I think, to be very competitive in that division and also be very competitive in the league this year. Number three is Oak Park. The Knights, of course, um, very, very much loaded. Wait till they get into January, February. They're going to be talented. They're going to be deadly. I expect them to do some damage heading into the year, into that campaign. And, of course, number two, of course, is Clarkston, of course, um, Foster Loiner. You got him, Drew My- Andrew Myers, who I think is going to be very, very good. And you got him. I'm not selling team at Dog Morton at all. Um, as the, um, you know, I haven't been selling on for a while. And then but you got Cole Chewins also, who's um, a very good player in there. And, of course, my number one ranked team in the OAA, in the Dragons Den Top 10 to start the year. I'm going to go with the Raiders of North Farmington, of course. Jerome Rogers, you know, Jacob Joe Burke. Um, I think that those two are going to have a huge year. This is a big year for Ty Negoshi and his Raiders. Now, for district purposes, I don't know how how um, 
North Farmington, Bloomfield Hills are in the same district. At Clarkson, Adams, Orion, Oxford are in the same district as well. And then South is in that Vaughan district with them, um, with you with the Jesuit and Detroit Renaissance in there, along with Farmington. So it's going to be a very interesting challenge heading into the um, campaign. So we'll see what happens heading into the year. I mean, like I said, same thing for the girls. I'm going to wish everybody the best of luck heading into the campaign. Enjoy, enjoy the season, and kids, enjoy the moment. Okay. All right, now, for Sammy Termina, for OA Now, I'm Sammy Termina. I'm signing out. Good night, and God bless. OAA Now is produced at Orion Neighborhood Television, Lake Orion's community media outlet. To learn more about ON TV, visit our website at www.orionontv.org or call us at 248-393-1060.